Brother Anthony Roberts, greeting you from the five Gospel Halls here in Tobago. We are delighted that you have been able to join us for today's program, Moments with Truth. We are praying that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. For those who are not saved, we are praying very specially that you will receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, even today, as you hear the Word of God. And for those of you who are saved, it is our prayer that you will be built up on, on your most holy faith as you view the Word of God. When we talk about separation, it comes from the word to separate. And uh, it is good for us to know because there are things we should separate from and separate onto. And we are going to be looking at some things where that we need to separate from and find ourselves separate onto that which is necessary for life. Separation, separated from people, you can be separated from people, you can be separated from things, or the grim dripper. Death itself, it brings a separation. And when you see your loved ones lying down in the uh, coffin as it is, you wonder where they are. They are separated from you. An absence, a separation that comes about because of death. Separation can be also in a decision making. You are separating things one from another. You have decided to choose one above another. You have separated them so that you can understand. God wants us to realize that we need to separate and have a clear understanding of what God is calling us to in respect of His Word. To separate, to stand out, one can be standing out to, uh, to sort of be uh, separated from the others. He's most outstanding, he's in front. He would be noticed, very noticeable. All these things we can look into the idea of separation. So, separation in marriage. Separation in marriage. And it brings up a breakup in the family wherein that the, the husband goes one way and the wife goes the other way and uh, the children are confused. It happens daily. Separation in marriage. This ought not to be. Remember your vows when you go to the altar. Till death us do part. I think it is. I don't know it. <laughs> but I can remember it. <laughs> and you also stay with your wife. But people do separate and brings about a hurt in the family. God wants us to be together as a family. And by this men will know that we are his disciples. We are walking in the light. We are children of God when we have that unity and love in the family. Respect parents to children, children to parents, husband to wife, wife to husband, as the case may be, so that there be unity and love. But sad to say, separation brings about a sadness. And we're going to see, as we go further on, if you are separated from God, you're going to be in serious trouble. The Bible terms separation as one that is sanctified, set apart. And this is for the person who is a child of God. He is set apart, he is sanctified, he is prepared, fit for the master's use. That's the separation itself. And we are called to separate ourselves from the world. The worldly pleasure. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. As believers, we are called to separate ourselves from that. So separation is necessary. But before we go into all what uh, the, one, the believers should do, let us talk about those who are not yet saved, the ungodly. The ungodly, and here what the word of God tells us. Why should we separate? Why? Because the, God, the call of God is on your life. You have to separate from this world. He's calling you out. Remember I told you the separation is one who stands out? God is calling you out. He's calling you out. Here what we are told in the book of Matthew chapter 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that are heavily laden. 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come unto me, those who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. People put burdens upon themselves. They burden down themselves because of religion, because of what their concept is of going to heaven. They want to do works. They want to sell books. They want to do all these things to please God, and they burden themselves. They put a yoke upon themselves. They even hold on to the commandments and they say, yes, we must obey the commandments in its entirety, but it is impossible. It's impossible because somewhere along the line, if you check the commandment, you are guilty of breaking the commandment. One, at least, you break all. It's like a chain. A chain, a complete chain with links put together. You break one link, you break that chain. So if you break one commandment, you're guilty of it. My dear friend, the law cannot save you. So don't burden yourself with trying to keep the law for salvation. If righteousness came by the law, the word of God tells us, then Christ died in vain. Righteousness is through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's very important for us to recognize this. So we have to separate from the idea that we can hold on to something or something we are doing to please God to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, come on to me, those who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Rest, oh, it is difficult to do works to obtain salvation. Heaven word God tells us. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any one of us can boast. So you can't work for your salvation. You can't work for your salvation. Salvation is a gift and it is free given to you. Separate yourselves and come unto me and I will give you rest. This is what God is calling, to, calling you to. So we have to recognize this truth. Why should we separate? Because of the love of God. And we know the verse so well. For God so loved the world that he gave. God gave his son so that you can obtain salvation through his blood. That's why we should separate. Separate from the things of the world. Separate from the evil one. Separate from sin. And we're going to see that later on. Where God is able to give you that freedom. That you can be separated from sin. So here it is. We know the John 3.16. We know the verse very well. We quote it over and over. But yet it is there before us and sometimes we don't pay attention to what it is saying. It's saying that God loves you. Separate because of the love of God. The love of God. God so loved the world that He gave. He gave. And this God is calling us to separate. He wants us, He wants to give you his love so that you can come away. You can separate from all these things. You know what Ephesians 2 and 1 tells us? And you who had quickened, who were dead in trespasses and in sin. You who had quickened, who were dead in trespasses and in sin. And Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, so death, death was passed upon all, for all have sinned. So you ought to separate yourself from sin in itself. Separate yourself from sin. Come unto the Lord. How do we do this? We recognize that we are sinner. How do we know that we are sinner? The word of God tells us, as by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, so death was passed upon all. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God is saying that you ought to separate yourself from that sinful state and condition. Come on to me, those who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Burden with sin. Burden with sin. If you check through your life and you try to realize that you're not a sinner, my dear friend, you're making a big mistake. You're making a big mistake because the word of God said, all have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So separate yourselves. Separation unto God. Remember I told you separation is from as well as it unto. 
The Apostle Paul can talk about that. We separate ourselves from idols onto the true and living God. This is what he calls us to do. So here it is. We are called to separate unto God. Separate unto God. Separation is for everyone so that you can come to the knowledge of his saving grace. The knowledge of his saving grace. As we mentioned before, he is the only means of salvation. That's why we should separate. That's why we should separate. Hear what he says in John 14 and 6. Jesus said unto them, or unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So it's very important for us to realize the separation he's calling us to is to recognize that he is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. That's why we have to separate ourselves. The love of God calling us on to salvation. Why he wants to save you from death and destruction. That's why you should separate yourself too as well. Separate yourself unto God because what awaits mankind is death and destruction. Death because we are told, as I mentioned before, the wages, the payment for sin is death. And strange enough, strange enough, we have to work and the work we are doing is unto death. So you're working yourself unto death, my dear friend, when you can come and get the free gift of salvation. God is able to give you free. That's what it tells us in 2 Peter 3 and 8. And I'm going to do a lot of reading there so you can understand. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men come slackness but is long-suffering towards us. But not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away, and a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works therein shall be burnt up, you know, some people go about telling you well, that uh, this world, uh, we are going to live here for ever and ever, a thousand years, etc. But the world is going to be burnt up. God is going to destroy this earth. It is said here, right in the book of Peter, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, dissolved, what manner of person ought he to be in all holy conversation and goodness? And know what it says. Looking on and hastening on to the coming of the day of God, separate yourself. For the day of God is coming, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, we according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth. My dear friend, our brother mentioned it, and we can read it probably as we go down in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 21. I behold the new city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, a bride, a dawn. And thus we are called to separate ourselves because this is a, what God is calling us to. That we can obtain that new heavens and the new earth which is set forth for us. So separation is necessary. It is necessary. We ought to separate ourselves. And in so doing, the only way you can do that is recognize your state and condition. Your state and condition and realize that you're a sinner and repent of your sin. And ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you. And save you and he will separate you from the sin, the curse of sin, the sinful world. And we're going to be talking about that too. Even as believers, when we come into fellowship, we ought to separate ourselves from the things of this world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The three deadly things that surrounds man and destroys man. So we are separating ourselves from the destruction. The destruction that is about us. So God wants us to come apart. Come apart. Be chosen. Be brought out. But you have to give your heart to the Lord so that you can be one that is chosen. You see, God foreknowledge a way down in history, even before the foundation of this earth, knew very well that you will be sitting under this gospel, you will be hearing our voice, and you will be hearing the call of salvation, 
and you have to give an account of your life. You have to give an account of your life. Separation. Separation. So we go further on. And we see there even in John 3 and 17. Separation from what? Condemnation. As we mentioned before, God is going to condemn. Hear what it tells us in John 3 and 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved might be saved, and it goes on, John 3 and 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, and this is the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light, why? Because their deeds are evil. This evil world, separate yourself from this evil world. You were surprised to know if you become a child of God, your evil friends will not want you anymore. You're a holy Joe, you're a church boy, and they would not want to be with you. So you have no problem in leaving them. They will leave you because of what you stand for. If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll find yourself in a position wherein that you, you can now tell your friends. Now show your friends the evil of their way and they will not follow you because they don't want to be separated but by their friend. We're going to see the dangers await those who refuse to separate themselves unto God. Condemnation, condemnation. And it is written, God wants us to separate from the things of this world, from the sinful life and live a life for Him. God wants to bring us into a newness of life. Why? Because there is a hell coming. There is a hell coming. Hear what we are told about in the book of Luke chapter 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which lay at the gate full of sores. Picture the scene. There is the beggar. There is the rich man. He's passing every day. He's seeing this man full of sores. And desiring this man who full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fall from the rich man's table. A poor man. Most however, the dogs came and licked his sores. The state and condition of that man. And it came to pass that the beggar died. The beggar died. My dear friend, it's appointed. It's appointed unto man wants to die. So no care how far you run, as one would say, you run, but you can't hide. That is a reality. We have to keep that appointment with death. The rich man, he died. The poor man, he died also. So we must realize that death is before us. And how we know this? The payment, the wages of sin. The payment for sin is death. The reality of it all. Who are we afraid to discuss that topic? But it's a real topic. It's a real topic. Don't wait until you reach the point of death. But my dear friend, now, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. So we have the rich man died and the, the poor man died in verse 22 and it came to pass that the beggar died and he cried by, uh, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and he was buried. And in hell, this is what the word of God tells us, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. My dear friend, there is consciousness after death. You may not know it, but you will hear this voice. And you will hear voices that are telling you he must be born again. And that is going to haunt you throughout eternity. Because there is no hope after death. Now is the time. Now is the time. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. So God is saying now. Now is the day of salvation. In hell he lifted up his eyes and being in torment. You know some people tell you that there is no hell but the word of God teaches hell. The Lord Jesus Christ speaks about hell, even more about the heaven. He might have talked more about hell so that people can be warned to separate themselves from the pending danger that is yet to come. 
the pending danger that is yet to come. Tormented. He was torments. Now, if you notice, it is in plural, not one. Torments. Torments. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And here he said, and he cried out, said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of the finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. You know, people tell you that uh, hell, there's no fire. It's, a, it's not a, a literal fire, it's a figurative fire. My dear friend, fire is fire, and fire will burn. It's real fire. A place that is prepared for the devil and his angels. It is believed that you go to the bowels of the earth and it's boiling fire in the bowels of the earth, the center core of the earth. Fire is real. But Abraham said unto him, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest the good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, but you are tormented. Oh, what a sad position to be in. That's why we are bringing this reality to you. If you die without Christ, you will end up into a lost eternity in torment. You will be tormented. And there is no day and night but throughout eternity. You see, people don't realize the danger of it forever and ever. There is no coming out of hell. There is no stopping, my dear friend. Continue falling in darkness. The blackness of darkness forever. The word of God tells us. A falling and a falling and no footing. Oh, you're afraid to fall, but when you fall and there is no footing, my dear friend, it's a frightening thing. It's a frightening thing. So we are telling you separate. Separate from the torments and the dangers that I that awaits mankind if he refuse the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And Abraham went on and said, Son. Beside thee, he wanted him to come and, and give him some water to cool his tongue. And my dear friend, don't let people fool you and tell you there's ice water in hell. No, there's no ice water, no such thing. No water in hell. So that flame and torment, he wanted just a little drip of water to cool his tongue. That's to tell you how bad it is. It is. And there it is, God, uh, Abraham is saying, beside thee, between us and you, there's a great girl fix. And they that which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. In other words, you can't. No, there is a gulf fix. There is a great gulf fix. And you cannot come out, my dear friend. A prison, a prison. Separate yourself unto God from the hell and damnation. The, the place that we are mentioning here, the place of torment. The place of torment. And we go further on. Then he said, I pray thee, the father Abraham, that thou wilt send and tell my brethren. We know the story very well. We can read further down. And he said, let them, they have the prophets. Let them hear them. They have the word of God. Let them hear that. And we are telling you so that you would not end up like that rich man. The word of God. The word of God. Condemnation awaits those who refuse. Refuse the Lord Jesus Christ. So separation. Separation. We go on to another separation in respect of uh, the great white throne. And this is very important for us to mention to you, my dear friend. If you die without Christ, Revelations 20 and 11, it was quoted many a times and we have to quote it over and over again. Revelations 20 and 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. My dear friend, Judgment Day is coming. That's why you need to separate yourself now. Judgment Day is coming. And I see, uh, sorry, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. 
and they will judge every man according to their works. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. My dear friend, it's very important for you to realize this. Don't follow the ideology when you're dead, you're done. No, my dear friend, what the word of God said, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the judgment. The judgment, there is a judgment day coming. You know, people are not so much afraid of death, you know. What they're afraid of is what lies beyond death, the judgment of God. The judgment of God. So we are telling you separation. Separate. Come out from among them. Come out from the things of this world. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Separate yourself from and unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Come unto me, those who are heavily laden, and I will give thee rest. So it goes on. Why we need to separate ourselves too is that God is giving us a place, a hope. A hope, as our brother had mentioned, that new Jerusalem, as I also had mentioned. A place wherein dwelleth righteousness. We talk about hell, but there is a heaven to gain. And you know what it says in the book of John chapter 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. To receive you unto myself. That's why he's calling you to separate yourself from the things of this world from sin. And come unto him so that when he comes, he can receive you unto himself. Very important for us. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast, Moments with Truth. We want to invite you to call us at 796-0979 or 283-2222. Or you can email us at afrob64 at gmail.com. If you look on the screen, you will see our various locations and the times of our services. Be free to attend. A welcome awaits you at all times.